Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of eCoffee with Experts. I'm your host, Matt Fraser. And on today's show, I have with me a very special guest, Phoenix Ha. Phoenix, <clears throat> excuse me, is the CEO of AdBeacon, a Facebook ad optimization platform. And she's also an adjunct professor at the California Lutheran University in Thousand Oaks, California. She has an executive master's degree in business from the California Lutheran University and is highly skilled in various aspects of digital marketing, including including but not limited to Facebook ads. When not marketing, working on marketing campaigns for her clients, Phoenix enjoys working out and collecting Harry Potter Lego sets. Phoenix, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And the Lego sets is the most important part of that entire intro. I just thought we should just be that. <laughs> well, it's pretty now. cool, you know. <laughs> Everybody has, uh, you know, quirky hobbies or interesting hobbies that, you know, make them unique. So glad to hear about that with you. Um, <laughs> You know, how would you describe the type of person you were in high school, Phoenix? Highly rebellious, um, a little too direct for my own good. So just a little oh. background. I'm I'm half Chinese, half Persian. Oh. And uh, half Chinese, half Persian? <laughs> yeah, it's a rare combination. Oh. Well, it's Very interesting. Rare combination. My wife's half Native American and half Jamaican. So you two, you oh, wow. the two of you are very, are very uh you have something Blended. in common. Yeah, yeah we have something in common. But yeah, no, I, I was very direct. And I also moved from Los Angeles to Thousand Oaks, which is a very conservative area. It was very different. It was predominantly mm-hmm. white. So they didn't mm-hmm. have a lot of the Asian community was building. So I would say I was very rebellious. I was trying to figure out a way to fit in um, oh. a little too direct for my own good. But it was, I made it through. We yeah. survived. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I'm glad you did. I think you know, high school is a challenging part of life for any human being. I, I think I, I certainly found it difficult. <laughs> but anyway, um, how did you get? What made you want to get into digital marketing? It's a great question. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, because I re- I remember when we were in high school. Actually, it was funny mm-hmm. you mentioned high school. I was part of this thing called Ethos, which is an, an entrepreneurial program and. They're like, okay, we have this project and it was very much marketing. You come up with your yeah. product, you find a, you know, a full marketing strategy. And I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I was like, I don't want anything mm. to do with this. And I distinctly remember that and laugh at that now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think what happened was when I was in college at CSUN, I originally started at California State University at Northridge. And I was not doing well. I was failing all my classes. I was not interested, um, oh. just not not in a good headspace. But I went mm. to a macro econ course that had okay. like a 60% fail rate. Oh. And for some reason, it just clicked. It just made sense. To me, it was common sense. Like, of course, A, B, oh. C, we're good. Yeah. Wow. Cool. I, I don't know how but it did and then i ended up moving back home and i went to california lutheran university i love that university that's why i teach there now is Mm -hmm. they tailored the teaching to be a lot more hands-on and applicable to everyday life and then it sparked this kind of interest yeah and i think to answer your question a little bit more directly would be there was this marketing agency at the time mm. that was modeling and mm-hmm. they were like one of the first creative agencies that had like three different silos, experiential PR, and then, you know, creative. And wow. to get an internship there, it was a one year wait. And it was like you, it was an unpaid internship in downtown LA, huh. which by the way, for reference is about an hour drive to an hour and a half drive, depending on traffic um, from where I was at in Thousand Oaks. Wow. And, you go there and just grind and you're working until 3 a.m., but you're working on one of some of the most exciting projects. And through that process, I fell in love with marketing. And then from there, I learned about digital marketing and um, it kind of exploded. Well, that is, that is really cool. Like, you know, so you, you worked the full year for free? Oh, I... An internship? Yes. So I sat there and I was like, I don't care what I do. I don't care. And I was in school too, so... I was like, I don't care what I have to do, but I am going to get at least a part-time or full-time position here. I don't know yeah. what and how, but I'm going to prove myself. And I knew there was a click in my head of this is the time to work. And I was yeah. able to achieve a full-time. And then I ended up uh, spearheading my own department there. Wow. Moving on. So you basically worked your ass off to prove your, your value. Yeah, you kind of have to. You have and, to, right? Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Sometimes I think I should have done that, but that's another story. 
Um, <laughs> how, so is that, that's probably how you first developed your skills and doing that. You know, here's a question for you. And it might be a, a loaded one. So forgive me, but do you feel there are any unique challenges that, that women face when working in digital marketing? Uh, absolutely. It, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with one right now that I have to, after, you know, these podcasts, I have to address oh. directly. Um, okay. But yeah, you know, it's, it's a tough topic to talk about for sure. a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, I can either lose the audience right now or I yeah. can have them lean in. It's two different things, well, right? Well, we and can skip it if you want and we'll just edit it. No, in. I'm, this you. is a heartbeat topic actually for me. Sure, and I, I love speaking on it. It takes great. years of refinement to not <laughs> isolate any group of people. So let me yeah. just start off with something. Um, I love men in the sense of my colleagues, everything. I actually, you know, mm-hmm. I really admire some of my best mentors were men. Some of my best mentors were, were women. And mm-hmm. uh, I think it comes down to people and how we treat people, right? Mm-hmm. We treat them. And I really am a firm believer that if you just looked at my resume, that'd be kick ass. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. And that is not the reality. And that's okay. So mm-hmm. as a female, I have to understand and I have to understand my audience, like any type of marketing, and tailor how I market myself to my audience. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? Absolutely not. But do I need to do that strategically? Absolutely. So in a perfect world, I'd be able to do exactly what you do and get the same amount of praise. But that's just mm-hmm. not the case. I knew I had to work my ass off in your words. And I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I knew that I had to stand out and be an exceptional female in the space. I also mm-hmm. knew that I couldn't be a pushover. And I had to you know, stand my ground in certain aspects. Had mm-hmm. to be, I wouldn't say cocky, but confident. I had to be stern, but not problematic. I had to be direct and not emotional. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to get a higher education to sit at the table for people to hear me. Wow. But that's okay. And I'm fine with it. Yeah. And I'll make it worth it. Yeah. I hope that answers your question a little bit. Oh, absolutely. And you're damn good at what you do too. So, um, what advice would you give to other women, young women looking to enter the digital marketing industry? Just do it. Go for it. I can't do wait it. to see what you do. Uh, like, yeah. look, this is my motto. Am I allowed to curse here or we just avoid that? Go thing? ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's no one that's going to like, oh. <laughs> okay. So my biggest motto is you can talk some shit, but you you have to back your shit. So, um, you know, with women in the space, I would say, go for it. No one's going to stop you until you stop yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no wrong style to do anything as long as you have data to back whatever stance that you have question everything, question everything always, but be graceful about it. Mm -hmm. And also understand your audience and be smart about how you, when you want to speak up and when you don't, Yeah, because it's like children. I always go like, okay, you know, I, there's a lot of toddlers in my life right now, none of my own, but there's a lot of toddlers in my Mm -hmm. life. And Mm -hmm. I always tell them, I'm like, this is what you're going to stomp your feet over. You could have done this for Disneyland, but you're doing this over a lollipop, right? It's the same concept. It's like figure out when you want to stomp your feet and then make it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that would be my, my word of advice. Just go. Yeah. Overthink it. Do you think that like, you know, I was just reading an article earlier today from uh, Grant Cardone about personal branding and how, you know, he's talking about ways, 10 ways to make money using your skills. Do you think that not only for men and not only for women, but also for men, do you think that, you know, in the days of WordPress and content publishing being so much more accessible than 15 years ago, do do you think it's pertinent and maybe relevant for people to establish their authority and expertise through publishing? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, here, here's my theory on everything. Mm. Everyone is just figuring it out, mm. right? No one's an yeah. expert in anything. Like you have experience for sure, yeah. but if you stay curious, I call I call marketers professional or digital marketers professional button clickers or button yeah. pushers. That's mm. all we are. We mm. click the same buttons. We just do it in more strategic ways. So, mm. you know, I'm excited for the next 
18 year old kid, 17 year old kid that comes up with a whole new concept of how to create content and publish content. Wow. And do it in a disruptive way. TikTok is a yeah. perfect example of that. These kids are coming through and just demolishing oh, and adults too. And yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that you've had some experience with Facebook ads. And uh, how did you first get involved with Facebook ads? Was it as a result of the the, the internship you did and, and grew from there? No, I have a very weird story um, of okay. how I came into the space. And it's actually hilarious. And, you know, so I'll, I'll preface this. I did go to Dubai and speak on Facebook ads and ad world and kind of oh, cool. this really... Yeah, it was it was weird. I had a like a very quick push to the front. Um mm -hmm. and what most people didn't realize, and I was rubbing elbows with some of these legends, keep in mind I'm so blessed to be able to do that. And I call mm -hmm. them my friends now, but mm -hmm. keep in mind, like two years prior, I didn't even know what paid social was. Oh, wow. So yeah, it was it was a really interesting transition. So my background is specifically, like I said, in experiential PR and creative. So mm -hmm. conceptually for example, like uh, Impossible Burgers. We were there at the forefront when Impossible Burgers was just thinking about launching, what that launch plan was. We had pitched them all these different ideas from start to finish activation-wise. What are we going to do in terms of pop-ups and get people mm -hmm. involved? PR side, how are we going to have influencers? That was my thing, was communications manager, was influencer relations and making mm -hmm. sure the right people were in the right seats to propel the brand and the image. Mm -hmm. And then all the way down to you know, execution. So that was really interesting to me and mm -hmm. very creative, dense on the creativity. And I loved mm. it. However, that world isn't really my world. I'm a lot more mellow. I could give a crap about body image. I don't want to gossip all day. That just wasn't my vibe. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it, but it just wasn't me. So I left and I actually went internally to Super Footwear, which is a skateboarding company. And I loved it because at heart, I'm a tomboy in skate and I learned all about oh, that. Cool. But again, yeah, it was super fun again. And I worked with K Swiss in that capacity as well, because they're under the same umbrella and learned a lot about that side. But again, really not digital marketing. I did more of the organic side and creative mm -hmm. thing globally. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward, you know, the pandemic, I wanted to help out small businesses. I was like, Oh, what's the oh. next challenge? So I I yeah. did that. I quit my job at Supra and I was like, let me help small businesses. So I ended up becoming the marketing director of a small brewery. And it was very difficult, but it was also a great time for growth. And during the pandemic, I was let go. Literally the day we went down and shut down, I, I sent an email. I was like, hey, how do you want to proceed? And you know, he's like, I'm so sorry. We're just not able to sustain at this time. So yeah, uh, that was the first and hopefully only time I'll ever be let go of a job, yeah. but it was humbling. It was terrifying, but it oh, made me sure. hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So I got this ad at national positions for paid social or actually it's paid search. And I was like, Oh, they're mm. paying me to search things. I was like, Oh, they're paying oh, yeah. me to search things. How interesting. And I was hired on as a junior analyst for uh -huh. paid social because of my creative background. Yeah. And fell in love. I don't know if you're an extreme personality like I am, but I was uh, yeah, in. very much. I have ADD. So yes, I'm very extreme. Same with the ADD <laughs> family. So within that very short amount of time, it sparked and I fell in love with paid social and I live, breathe and just keep going. And I, I started learning about all the different little silos and then quickly rose um, kind of in authority in that space. So again, it kind of worked out because 14, iOS 14 came out like maybe yeah. six months after I had already gotten my teeth sunk in and, and in a good yeah. place with Facebook ads. So it was kind of like perfect timing. Yeah. Like, you know, off camera, we were talking about how uh, I was working at the car dealership and I was doing some really cool stuff with Facebook ads. Uh, but I never experienced Admageddon or whatever you want to call it because iOS 14, pardon me, wishes that Mark Zuckerberg had never pissed off Tim Cook <laughs> because, you know, forget the government doing something about it. Tim Cook's like Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, we're going to do something about that. Uh, whatever his motivation is, iOS 14 has been a game changer. What are your, what are your thoughts? The on the, yeah. What, what are your thoughts on the impact, the impact of, of that on Facebook ads? Like, 
Uh, Pre yep. iOS 14 and post iOS 14, 14.5, whatever you want to call it. What was the biggest change? Like what, 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 what did you see happen? So to answer the first part of the question, personally, it sure. made my career. So like, I just, <laughs> part of me is like a little guilt cheek because it, it gave me a platform and it gave me a voice and I'll explain that later. But I cool. think in terms of, yeah, in terms of impact, it was detrimental to a lot of companies. Uh, it, I think for me, it opened up eyes to understand what was truly going on. Yeah. Before we even opened our eyes, right? Like you don't uh-huh. know you're sitting in a pile of Dog feces crap. until someone tells you, by the way, you've been sitting in a pile of feces this whole time. And that's, I think yeah. that's the situation that iOS opened our eyes to. So number one, I think what happened was every business owner was like, well, I'm not getting the return that I got before. And I'm okay. not getting a nearly the amount of revenue I had pre yeah. iOS. Right. Yeah. It this is hurting me. Um, number two is marketers didn't know how to pivot because there were no answers to their questions. No. And we had to get creative again. Yeah. Yep. And then number three is things started getting worse where we weren't getting any information in terms of like, for example, I had some clients that would say you had four purchases today and no revenue was coming through as to how much. There's no way to identify what those purchases were. Purchases were, uh, it was yeah. delayed. So you didn't know if it came in today or two days ago. And then you're not able to optimize what the best audiences are. You just don't know what's going on. You're just shooting in the dark and spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. And hoping it works. Yeah. So it, it had a huge that is impact. That's not good. Yeah. Because the most, the greatest thing about digital marketing is you're supposed to be able to know what works and be able to adjust as you go. I mean, that's what I was. I get doing. very concerned about the marketers that say it didn't impact them really at all. I get very concerned. I, as I oh, interview, I wonder. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to call bullcrap on them because, you know, yeah. I, I just, you know, it, it, I well, I didn't personally experience it because I wasn't doing any advertising at the time. I've been reading like heck about it to him, <laughs> yeah. prepare for this interview. And I'm like, shut the front door. Like, this is unbelievable. Like, for instance, it's like it's almost like the all-seeing Facebook pixel, you know, going back to the Lord of the Rings, Sauron or whatever his name, he sees everything, right? It's yeah. all of a sudden, like not the picture of the Facebook being evil, but I'm just the saying eye. that the eye, like, you know, the Facebook pixel is amazing. You stuck that sucker on your website. You could create conversions and target on audiences. And, you know, I was targeting people based on whether they converted or not and retargeting them. And then all of a sudden, Apple comes on, allows people to opt out. And so much of the traffic comes from mobile phones now. It's ridiculous. It's mind boggling. And all of a sudden, like, it's like, he put a blinder on the Facebook pixel. So right. you, what are your, like, is the Facebook pixel, is it even valid? Like, yeah, like I think it's valid to a certain point. That like iOS is done. I mean, like you've got this thing called the magical conversion API, which was supposed to solve all the issues. It did actually help a bit, but I didn't really see much. I just don't trust the data anymore. And it's, uh, I wouldn't blame Facebook. I think that's the number one thing is, they're doing whatever they can with the space that they have and, and the parameters and boundaries that they have. However, I truly believe that's why we built Ad Beacon. You know, you need okay. a first party data tracking tool. You have to okay. in this space. So. so how have you solved that problem then where, for instance, the data has been skewed, the data has been taken away? Um, there's so many things I want to ask before we even talk about like that. Like do flipping custom audiences still work? Like, can you still upload yeah, so, your, can you still upload your data? Cause I was uploading data yeah. out of the CRM and retargeting people and excluding people. I was excluding sold customers from campaigns. And then I was using the data to create lookalike audiences. So yes, yes. So to answer your question in a multi prong way is you sure. can, but not from Facebook. You need a first party, like you need ad beacon, right? And we'll go okay. into ad beacon, but, um, you don't have the ability to do a breakdown anymore. So you don't actually have that data available to you. Back in the day, you were able to have a breakdown. You were able to see what time they purchased, where they purchased, geographic range, gender, what devices, et cetera. 
None of that is available anymore. Everything is completely blank. You'll still see the breakdown, but it'll just have zero, 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 zero. And at the end, it'll say 15 purchases, but it will not tell you any information about that. So that's gone. Wow. That's been gone. That wow. was a really big problem, right? Um, because I can't even deduce to figure out if this purchase yeah. came in this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the second thing is, uh, you know, downloading the report of those email addresses. We pivoted where I was like, okay, LCV is super important. Sorry, I have okay. a roommate in the background. It's all good. But uh, yeah, LTV is super important, right? So I was like, okay, we need to pivot our strategy to get email addresses in and then download those email addresses, put them back and create lookalike audiences like you were saying. But yeah. if we have Ad Beacon and we know that their Facebook had a part of it and their email is more likely to be qualified as the email that they used in Facebook, it's just the yeah. way my brain thinks, how do we create more qualified audience based off purchase data from the site? So okay. it's the same thing, but it's not. And it's way more accurate because it's based off of click data. Okay. So... Let's talk about how you solve that problem. You saw this problem with Facebook ads, data being skewed, Facebook, Apple iOS, all of these things. What were your steps and process in, in coming? What was the journey from the problem to Ad Beacon and creating the Ad Beacon platform? Great question. So when iOS 14 hit, I knew it was on its way, but I didn't know to what degree. Okay. And then as I started seeing more issues, I went into a forum that of like a bunch, like a couple hundred thousand advertisers in Facebook. And I said, Hey, what are, what is everyone doing? Nobody was talking. Nobody was saying yeah. everyone's holding their cards close. And I'm yeah. like, this is complete BS. Like, come on guys. Yeah. So I went on, or, or I went on a Facebook live and I was like, okay. Hey, this is what I know. This is everything I know. And this is still my style to this day. I, I have yet to yeah. see someone actually break down what they're doing to pivot. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to keep course. things exactly. People want to keep things close to their chest. Right. I don't believe Most there's any people. secrets. I believe this is your secret, right? Mm, the way you can mm. be creative. However, um, I went on live and I said, Hey, look, the Wall Street Journal published this article about how people are testing and A B testing Android versus Apple users because you're still yeah. able to do that based on their latest updates. Yeah. So you can stop it at a specific update. So I was like, that's interesting. Do I want to play with that? Do I not want to play with that? Did it, did a case study, spoke about it, ad world and showed how I actually identified who the consumer is now um, for the clients in a much different way. And then being able to strategically put ad dollars there and see a lift, right? This is a temporary band-aid solution during that time. Yeah. yeah okay. So I was like, okay, what other things are in the space? And I discovered first pretty data tracking. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Cause I was not an expert in that at the time. And yeah. I had seen so many different platforms come out. Probably the loudest one is Hyros, right? Yeah. Everyone's talking about yeah. Hyros, Hyros. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember so his name, like, but anyway, guy's a big uh, Yeah. So I went in there and I did it. Very expensive. And I did not like it, right? I yeah. thought it was very interesting. However, I'm like, okay, let me keep looking for other solutions. So I tried out multiple platforms, so many platforms, paid a lot of money just to see, just to realize if you don't like something, build something mm. and um, built something that I'm really cool. proud of. So Ad Beacon solved the issue in terms of UI UX, in terms of actually optimizing in the platform. Another big thing like Wicked Reports, which I thought was interesting, was that Wicked uh, does all this reporting, which is great, but it's not in real time. How am I supposed to make my decisions if it's not in real time? So yeah, Ad exactly. Beacon refreshes every 15 minutes. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So listen, uh, in regards to first party data, like could you enlighten someone who's been out of the game for a little bit about more about exactly what we're talking about? So for instance, when you're saying yeah. first party data, I mean, I used to have data that was coming from the website directly through the Facebook pixel to Facebook for me to be able to right. make my decisions and, and uh, you know, optimize my campaigns and retarget people. And I won't talk about all the cool things I was doing, but anyway, and is that like gone? Like, so you have to go to another source to get that data or how, like some people are talking about sticking the pixel on the server on your own server and bypass because of browse. But I mean, I don't even know if that works with a mobile phone. Like it's just crazy, man. So enlighten me. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore because Facebook owns that data. Therefore it is always third party data. 
right? Whatever oh, they are sending you is hey, third party. Here's where there we're you getting go. into the nitty gritty. So okay. whatever Facebook's telling you is a purchase, what did it's they qualify third. as a purchase? It's a third yeah. party report. You're right. You're right. Right. So t- TikTok, third party. Facebook, yes. third party. Anything coming from an app or something separate is a third party. Now, everything coming from your site is first party. So we got okay. ahead of it and we said, instead of having Facebook UTM parameters that report into GA, which is what you're doing, yeah. Yeah. you're doing ad beacon UTM parameters in Facebook and Google and whatever platform to correlate with the code or our pixel or our fingerprint on the site. And then okay. now they connect. Interesting. And you own that data. You own that data and you know for a fact from start to finish where it started. In essence, then, forgive me for sounding stupid, (laughs) but uh, is it like, is is it, is it the ad beacon tracking pixel now instead of the Facebook pixel? Yeah. I mean, you still should, you still need it. You still need an ad. You still need a Facebook pixel. Yes. Right. On the site. There's a layer. There's a layer that you've built. Correct. Wow. That is so industrious and in, in, ingenious of you to come up with that idea, to be frank. So in other words, you're, 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 sending, you're, you're getting your data and you're sending your data to AdBeacon and not you're, you've eliminated Facebook as the middleman to like filter your data and screw up your data and skew your data and distort Correct. your data Correct. and you're bypassing. But how does that... So my question is how does... So because that... So therefore, it doesn't really matter then because if someone's visiting your site with iOS 14, it's first party data. Correct. Oh my gosh, shut the front door. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So there's something that people need to understand that's a little bit more granular. Um, so yeah. the argument would be, well, why would it, it shouldn't be that different, right? The data that's coming from Facebook and the data that's coming from AdBeacon. And yeah. There is a big difference. So there's two key elements here that I really wanted to harp on for those who are sure. already like I am. Yeah. Go ahead, um, please. Number one is attribution window. Okay. So back yeah. in the day, we had a 28 day click, seven day view. So yep. to everybody who doesn't know what that means, it just means if someone clicked within 28 days of looking or clicking your ad on Facebook yep. or viewed your ad within seven days, Facebook got credit for that purchase. Okay, that's yeah. just what it means. Is that it got they do last click attribution? Is that what it was more so? Yeah, no, it, I would no. say that it was full impact. It was full impact. Okay. And okay. Um, what that means, so that goes back to Ad Beacon, is we have four, yeah. four models, four attribution models. We have first click. So if anyone bought off of the first click, last click, say, you know, yeah. in reverse. And then we have linear and full impact. Full impact in the simplest way to understand is, hey, I bought this, you know, Tiger Balm. The Tiger Balm is $5, let's just say, without inflation, yeah. right? It's $5. And if Facebook had any part of the sale in terms of clicks, then I get $5. Okay. Attributed. I don't know why I just raised my hand. There's something That's going okay. on with my Mac. All right. So. Facebook, if at any point, let's just say there's 15 touch points before someone buys this, which would be very expensive, um, then Facebook still gets credit for $5. Now, if we did linear and, you know, it only had two out of five clicks was Facebook, then you only get two fifths or yeah, two fifths of that $5, yeah. if that makes sense as credit. So there's different types of modeling. I believe fully that Facebook did full impact modeling because no matter what part of the process they had for the ultimate goal, which was the sale, you got credit for it. That's why there was always over-reporting in terms of Google and Facebook and who was getting the credit. But most likely both of them had a part in that. Yeah. I was taking a course on attribution modeling on LinkedIn Learning and uh, it just blew my mind away at the different types like mixed modeling. And I'm trying to figure out right now what the difference is between what you're saying full impact and mixed modeling is and uh, so on and so forth. But that could probably be for another episode. Um, That being said though, so you were basically able to restore the first party data by building Ad Beacon. Correct. So like I was saying with that attribution model that Facebook yeah. had, 28 day click, seven yeah. day view, yeah, yeah. Um, it actually got cut down to seven day click, one day yes. view, 
Um, so now your time window is a lot shorter, which shorter. impacts. Yeah, it, it impacts leads. Big time. And yeah, and that's why they're like, okay, leads, their lead gen campaigns are going to like suffer severely from this. Um, but also, let's just say you have a really high price item. People are going to take a longer period of time to make that decision, right? So uh-huh. we actually brought that back. You can come all the way out to 100 days in click data. And we'll be able to tell you days. how long how long that customer journey is. And then you'll see how the data really skews. And then also the next thing too is something called view data. So we don't have view data. View data is something that Facebook has. And I like to compare this to... Okay, go ahead. They created. You like to compare it to... Think about it like a billboard. You drive by a billboard. Who's to say that that billboard didn't impact you to buy said product? But there's no way for us to really track that. Right? (laughs) Well call tracking numbers and uh, very specific URLs for every single uh, billboard that would be redirected to a UTM parameter is one way you could right, do it. That would be expensive and insane. Exactly. But there's just, there's no real way. But Facebook can say, hey, uh, someone viewed our ad, so therefore we get credit. But there's no way for us to really know that uh, because Facebook has a proprietary blend of certain metrics that say you viewed that ad, right? Video views, little things like that, right? Yeah. So they then the they report, right? So then they report to you, hey, by the way, you had 15 sales. And you're like, that's weird. Uh, I don't really and, see that here. Yeah. But it was actually a Google sale because of a click. And uh, but they're like, no, but they viewed our ad. So I understand the argument that who's to oh say that Facebook didn't have goodness. an impact. Oh my gosh. So they're saying because you saw the billboard, even though they clicked on the Google ad, Facebook's trying to take credit for the billboard view rather than the the, the last action. Seven that day click happened. or <laughs> you get seven day click or one day view. Uh, yeah. Not and one day view. Yeah. So this is something ad beacon, okay. it's just click data. Everything is click data and existing from our purchase purchasers. So I'm not just coming and storing all the data of people adding to cart. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm storing the data of people who purchase to make better decisions and to really uh, understand actually what revenue is coming from Facebook. Okay. That's why the the Facebook control is important for add to cart. Okay. Yeah. Because you just triggered a question for me. Like, does that mean abandoning abandoned cart campaigns um, can be more effective, obviously using ad beacon? I believe so. Yeah. So because you yes. can create custom audiences still around that, right? If they did not, right? We can create lookalike they add to cart. Too, yeah, those. yeah, lookalike and abandoned. And if they did not convert, then retarget them. Hey, you exactly. forgot something so in your shopping cart. Here's a twenty yeah. percent coupon. Come buy me. Yeah. Buy this. <laughs> buy this. But yeah, so there's just a lot of really cool things, and um, we took it a couple steps further. So. Ad Beacon looks like Facebook on purpose because I don't wow. like having to learn a new platform. <laughs> I'm getting very excited because I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I've been like shying away from getting on Facebook. And I don't know if it's my screen that's frozen right now or yours. So you know, I myself am really excited about what you've done here with Ad Beacon. And uh, I was, to be frank with you, I bet Facebook's bloody excited about what you're doing with that beacon. They better be because, <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it appears that it's going to be able to make f- advertising on Facebook uh, more effective. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We're advocates of Facebook. We're not like against yeah. it. And again, to all the people who are like, do we jump ship? You know, I get that question all the time. Like, we're not we're not engaging with Adv- or with uh, Facebook anymore. It's like, I'm sorry, purchasers are still there. The problem is you're oh, not gosh. able to track. So yeah. would you rather a piece of the pie or would you rather go to TikTok and try again to fish through, you know, a very oversaturated barrel and also a platform that is not formulated for people to purchase off of? So it's it's tough, yeah. but it's it's it is a solution I'm very proud of. Yeah, no, I uh I'm definitely like there's so many questions. More, there's so many more questions I could ask you about, like, for instance, did, uh, targeting. Like, is it make it more effect easier to do targeting? Um, I, I don't know if I would say, I mean, yes, it gets uh, like my biggest motto too is you are the marketer. 
I am not going yeah. to teach you how to be a better marketer. Yeah, what exactly. I am going to tell you are the tips and tricks yeah. that I use on this platform yeah. because, yeah. you know, similar to your story, you you thought outside the box. That's what I love about this, yeah. this group of people, right? But um, yeah, I mean, what I will say at the very least, Ad Beacon will help you identify what is working and what isn't working in your okay. current campaigns. And then you can double down on those efforts a lot more effectively. That's amazing. For both not only lead generation, and we haven't even touched the subject of e-commerce, and I would love to have you come back. I know that we're coming to the end of a, our, our episode here, but to be frank with you, I get on these calls and there's, there's, they, they, I understand now why, uh, what's his name? Joe Rogan has, uh, forgive me for calling him, what's his name? Has three, four hour episodes because it's so easy to start talking about things that you're passionate about, things that are interesting and I know our audience would find interesting. But, you know, as well as like, uh, you know, e-commerce data, obviously being able to feed that data. Like for instance, is there a specific connection with Shopify store owners yes. that 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 your platform helps them to leverage their campaigns? Because my goodness. This this is this is right now, right? It's like perfect. It's, it's super seamless with Shopify. Um wow. we can do for WooCommerce, Laravel, we can custom make it for anything. However, e-commerce is where it thrives. And we yeah. also built part of the platform, which is basically like Shop. We pull Shopify data for predictive modeling. We also pull it for um, product reports, like what are the top products, everything that you would need as a marketer in order for you to optimize and create campaigns and scale them is in there. You don't have to keep having multiple tabs open, trying to identify. You can also optimize in the platform. You can scale your campaigns in platform. You completely optimize within Ad Beacon, or you can be wow. a purist and go over to Facebook. It's up to you because there are links to your campaigns. Um, you so, and there's a whole creative every, breakdown. Wow. You can optimize everything right within Ad Beacon, and it's connected to Correct. Facebook through whatever Correct. wizardry API that you've. I'm not going to get you to reveal the secret sauce because of <laughs> that, but uh, this is exciting for me. This is exciting, and I think that other marketers should get excited about it as well. Uh, if they want to find out more, where do they go? Like, first of all, if they want to find out more about you, where can they go online to connect? Well, with you can just. You can always just find me on LinkedIn, uh, Phoenix sure. Hall. You can also go, we have, we're just launching a YouTube channel, which I'm going to oh. just tell tips and tricks and talk about Ad Beacon, but also just talk about right what's on. going on in the space. Very similar to this vibe. Um, okay, and then cool. you can just go to adbeacon.com and see it Ad for yourself. Beacon. And there's... Dot com. Adbeacon.com. You can do a 14-day right trial, or I can do a demo with you and show you firsthand and right uh, go from there. Right on. Hey, I know our audience is going to be excited to hear about this as I am. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I would love to invite you to come back again because, you know, there's <laughs> so many you. other things that we could talk about and get into the weeds about and get into details about, I'm pretty sure. Uh, again, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure having you. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Right on. You're welcome. Thanks again.